I absolutely love low pro bags. I think they are the backbone of my photography and filmmaking. It is where my bags stay in, whether I'm going hiking, I'm walking a long distance, out in the wet, or I'm even just doing some like inside work. It's, it's where my camera lives. I had the slingshot for a few odd years, I believe. I then went to this like gray bag that went up Wales with me. I don't, I think it, well, I don't know what it was called, the transport or something, I don't remember. I've also owned the Pro Tactic range. This is probably not that, not very comfortable, but it's such a rigid bag and it holds so many lenses and I'll have this here for, I have this here for a reason. And then after that, I then upgraded to the Whistler One and the Whistler was one of just my go-to bags. I had it for probably five odd years, rigid, super weather resistant. It had basically everything I needed. It was always just quite a tight fit. I had the 450 as well. It was tough to get everything in there. I mean, I've taken the Whistler everywhere with me, whether it's through London, holding um, Canon Cine um, T1.3 cinema lenses, or it's up in Head holding Sony Cine Alters, big bulky lenses. I remember having the bag down on the dirt. It didn't matter whether I got caught off in a rainstorm. It was just so resistant to the weather and so resistant to abrasion and scratches and hits that it came everywhere with me. Even if it was just sitting on a mag liner for like a, an inside shoot, it's where my camera lives. My camera lives in low pro bags. I then sold the Whistler a couple of months ago for a Pro Tracker 550. The Pro Tracker 550 basically had everything I needed. It had all the fundamentals for me myself. It had a H2O bladders. It had really nice storage on the inside. It was bigger on the inside than the Whistler one. It had everything for me, but it was missing all of the fundamental rigidity that the Whistler had, and it was missing the fundamental weather resistance that the Whistler had. It was a front opening rather than back opening, which meant you had to take an all weather cover off every single time you wanted to get in the bag. So I sold that bag after about only a month. I just remembered going up into Wales with the Whistler and was just like, yeah, this bag needs, I need something that is really gonna be able to withstand the elements. But I sold the Pro Trekker, ended up going for the Whistler too. Now, I don't think in no way, shape or form this bag is perfect. It's a hell of a thick bag. And I wanna talk purely about things that I would love to see on the next generation of either the Whistler or the next generation of the Pro Tracker. I might get caught off in some rain soon, but this is the Whistler 2. I'm gonna talk all about the things that I wish it had, and I'm basically gonna directly compare it to the Pro Tracker. I've also got the Pro Tactic here for a specific reason which I'll get to in just a second. This bag has all the fundamentals you need for camera protection, but it has none of the fundamentals for yourself. The only place you have to put a water bottle is on this side here. It cannot hold a very large water bottle. It expands out, but it just doesn't have anywhere proper to put a water bottle. This is the only place, and it's not that ideal. A mesh on here, like the Pro Tracker, would be awesome. And a mesh on here would also be awesome, like on the Pro Tracker. There's no H2O water bottle storage. The Pro Tracker has H2O. Many of the F-Stop bags have H2O, but this just doesn't. It's an outgoing backpack that doesn't have really anywhere to store a proper nice litered water bottle. Right here is just a completely empty side where there's nothing. It seems like a pretty great place to put a H2O storage. So you could put a water bladder here, but every time you put the bag on the floor, you risk kind of putting a lot of pressure on it. Next up would be the top. This bag has a very unique feature that allows it to actually open up this compartment and take it out. Uh, the camera compartment basically becomes this top compartment as well. This is really pretty useful for if you have a big camera with a hell of a big lens in it and you want quicker access to it. This top compartment here is a hard shell designed for the exact same feature. You have a camera and a lens going down the body and I will comfortably put a 70 to 200 in this compartment here without a care in the world because I know that anyone who grabs this bag and throws it in a car, it's not gonna hit whatever is valuable in the top. The Whistler takes the same approach with this takeout function, but this top compartment, I have rings in it at the minute, so it's actually kind of rigid, but if it hit anything, it would go straight into the bag 
would end up hitting the valuables on the inside, um, bending these rings that are here. It's just anything that goes in here is going to get damaged. So a hard shell, yes, it would make the camera bag a little bit more heavy, but this right on here, I think would be pretty darn awesome. A removable waist strap. You did it on the uh, Pro Tactic, you allowed it to be removed. And you also did it on the Pro Trekker. But the Whistler 2, you didn't do for some reason. I'm not sure why, you didn't do it on the Whistler 1. Next feature is really better storage compartments here. But the Pro Trekker and the Pro Tactic range have these mesh pouches that are really useful to put stuff in. Now, you still have the pouches to put stuff in, but it would be much nicer if they were a little bit bigger and they were see-through, just like on the Pro Tracker. The next thing would be awesome is these quick release straps are bloody awesome. They're really easy to get off and on. You just unclick them, tighten them, click them on to keep them safe. The Pro Tracker had four that came with it. Two, I believe, going across, and it even came with two that go through the bottom. This bag has an amazing hard, rigid bottom that's completely weather resistant. I love it. But it would be cool if you put a loop here and a loop here, there is actually loops here and here, that allowed you to maybe strap dedicated ones on the bottom. But I know you could easily MacGyver one to here and one to here probably quite well. I would like to see in future though, a lot of the fundamental features come from the Pro Tracker range come to this bag. The water bottle holders, the H2O bladder, the, a rigid top to be able to put camera gear in, a 550 version of this bag that maybe isn't quite so steep or, or deep in, in the internals. A removable waist strap would be cool, but I can live with that out of that one. Or vice versa, have a Pro Trekker range that simply takes all the fundamentals from the Pro Trekker and just the fundamental weather resistance and rigidity that the Whistler range has. It's starting to rain now, so I've got to go. But I love these bags. I love the Pro Tracker range. I, I love that bag a hell of a lot. Um, and I love the Whistler range. I just wish they had a baby. Just a thought. I'll be waiting for a Whistler 3 and I'll be waiting for maybe a Whistler Pro Tracker. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching my random run on low pro bags. I'm excited to see what you guys create next, hopefully. Oh, my legs, my knees. Make it look so easy on TV when they sit down like that. It is not easy.